Hi there, Miss Sully here from Learn to Grow. I hope that you guys are enjoying your weekend. Today I want to talk to you guys about vermicomposting or worm composting. And what this is, is using worms, preferably red wigglers, to recycle food scraps and they turn it into this nutrient-rich vermicompost worm poop or worm castings. So a lot of the nurseries use this as a soil, soil amendment just because it's nutrient rich and they provide the plants all the nutrients they need. That's why they have such healthy plants and seedlings that they sell. So we're also going to talk about how to make your own worm bin at home. It's very inexpensive, very easy, and it's kind of a neat project for the whole family to do. Now before we get into the worm bin, I'm going to talk to you guys about the essential things that worms need in order for them to thrive and how to keep them happy in their new home. So the essential things that worms need in order for them to thrive and be happy, besides the food scraps we're going to give them, we want to make sure they have moisture in their worm bin, air, darkness because their skin is photosensitive, and also warmth but you don't want to get too hot or too cold. These worms thrive best between 55 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So the, I think the perfect place in my home to keep them is usually the basement. The basement's usually around 65 degrees. So if you're in a um, warmer climate, you can keep them outside all year, but you know we've, we get freezing temperatures here during the winter, so I'd rather keep them inside. So anyways, and you don't want to get too hot as well. Now next thing is what kind of worms do you use for your worm bin is you don't use earthworms, you don't go out there and start digging for earthworms. You'll need to order some uh, composting worms, red wigglers, tiger worms, those are just some different names that these are what they call these worms. Um, the scientific name for it I believe is Isensia fetida. So that's the kind of worms you want to get. And I had to order mine, um, I think it was out of state, I forgot what state, but I'll post the link of where I ordered them from um, about 18 months ago. And so my worms are thriving, they're very healthy, and actually I'm on my third bin now. So I'm gonna show you how to do it in a minute here. Now initially I started with one pound of worms that I purchased from a dealer online, and I'll post the link below this video for you. And usually they said there's about a thousand adult worms in that one pound of worms. So I started a bin about 18 months ago now, and there's some a uh, few things that I've learned along the way. And I actually started out with this huge bin. I think it's like a 20 gallon bin for one pound of worms, which you don't need for that many worms. Um, one pound, usually a 10 gallon bin is enough for that many worms. They don't need all that space and also it was so the the bin was so deep that i don't think it was allowing enough air to get to the worms preferably the shallower bins or smaller bins i think work better if you're going to have um, at least a, a pound of worm to start with now we're going to go back to the worm bin but first of all i want to talk about what to feed the worms and it's just usually vegetable fruits fruit scraps as well as some coffee grounds but mainly fruit and vegetable scraps what i usually do is i chop them up into smaller pieces so they break them faster and i try to keep them in the fridge and before i feed the worms i take this out a day before but also you want to avoid uh, certain foods such as meats, cooked foods, dairy, oily foods, as well as broccoli, onions, and citrus. And the reason why I avoid the, especially the broccoli and onions and or garlic, because of an indoor worm bin and over time when they start decomposing, they'll start to smell. So I don't want, you know, this, that smell around my house. Now the citrus you also want to avoid because it could be toxic to the worms if they eat a lot of it. Actually, it could be fatal to them. So you want to stay away from citrus as well. Now if you're doing a worm bin outside, you know, you can do the broccoli and onion if you want to, because you know, it's going to be outside and you're not really going to smell it inside your house but also avoiding the um, meats and dairy and cooked foods and oily foods, it's um, a good thing to avoid them because you don't want to attract pests, indoor or outdoor bin. So it goes for both ways. Now, another thing with worms is they don't have teeth, so they'll need some kind of grit to help them digest their food in their gizzard, just like how the birds do. So if you want, you can add some soil in there in your worm bin, maybe just a handful of soil as well as um, clean sand. You can add like a tablespoon, tablespoon of sand a month into your worm bin. And I bought some sand that's been washed from the store. So that's I use that as well. Now, another thing I read about is adding um, pulverized eggshells. So if you have a coffee grinder or if you have a mortar and a pestle, you can grind those 
eggshells into powder supposedly the eggshells will stimulate reproduction so i think it's working because it seems like i'm getting you know the worms are they keep reproducing and i have a lot of worms now so i'm not sure exactly um if that's exactly true but i read it and why not they mean uh, eggshells is a source of calcium so the eggshell is made of calcium carbonate so now let's talk about the worm bin i'm going to actually pick it up here and what we are going to put in the worm bin for the bedding so this first of all this is a shallower bin it's a 10 gallon bin by rubbermaid it's one of my storage bin that i'm reusing and it's about two feet long uh, looks like about 18 inches um, wide and about about eight to eight uh, ten inches tall so the shallower bin I think the better that way um, the air can get in there better for the worms as well as the worms they usually bury themselves within the six first six inches of soil they don't these worms the regular wrigglers they don't bury deeper than that so this is actually a perfect size for one pound of worms now also you want to drill holes onto your lid and this is my lid here. Um, I use about between, let's see, um, this one looks smaller than my other bin, but I really like the quarter inch bit holes better because, because they allow more air to get in. This is a little small, I think this is a um, 5 32nd bit, which is just a little bigger than 1 8th. So, but preferably, I'll show you the other lid here. These have the quarter inch bit holes in them. Now for your bedding, you can use either some dried leaves or a combination of leaves and newspaper. So I'm using some shredded newspaper as well as um, egg carton that I tore apart here as well. And I'm going to be adding some dried leaves in there as well. And the reason why you want to use the newspaper and leaves or shredded paper is because it keeps the moisture um, in, in them, but also allows air because because they have air spaces into these uh, in the fiber of the paper and the leaves, which is essential for the worms to have air and helps them breathe since they breathe through their skin. And we'll be spraying this uh, newspaper and leaves with some water to keep it moist. So after you prepare the worm bedding, you want to add your food and you don't want to add your worms right away. You want to have this sit for at least one and a half to two weeks. That way the food will break down and also it'll help the worms get acclimated better into their new habitat. I'm going to go ahead and add my leaves to my bin. Oops. <laughs> I just kind of mix them up all in there. So actually I have to take some of the bedding out because I haven't added my food yet in there. So I've got my bedding, I've got the newspaper, egg cartons, and some dried leaves in my bin. I'm gonna go ahead and add some food. So there's about a cup, maybe just a cup and a half of food in there. And you know what, one thing is I like to do with the worm bins is I like to add food only on one side of the bin. So I'm gonna move this over here just because I usually use one side of the bin as their feeding area. And also it makes harvesting the castings much easier because they tend to stay on one side where they feed and on the other side, they'll poop. And so I'll be able to harvest the casting while they're staying on one side where they usually feed. Now I'm gonna go and add some more newspaper and dried leaves on top of that. And the reason why you're burying the food with newspaper and leaves is because it also keeps the flies out of your bin so you want it to cover and the worms like to burrow and go in there while they eat their food and so we're going to spray some water oh, it's done. <laughs> give it a little moisture as the food uh, breaks down it'll also um, release moisture which will keep the newspaper and leaves moist as well now my worm bin here is more of a dry worm bin. So I don't drill the holes in the bottom just because um, what I usually do is if it looks like it's too moist and there's too wet, I just add more newspaper since they eat up the newspaper eventually. So this bin is pretty easy to do since it's only one bin and you don't have to worry about anything wet dripping from the bottom of the bin. Now another thing I do is I don't um, keep this closed all the way. I leave it ajar so that way the, there's enough air to get in there. What I learned in the past is I would seal these bins tightly or all the way and I noticed that the worms are trying to crawl out or they're crawling on the edge of the bin all the way around here 
that's because they're not getting enough air. So as long as the worms are happy, um, it's warm enough, so between 55 to 77 degrees, and they have enough food, moisture, and darkness, they'll stay in their bedding and they will not try to crawl out. There's lots of baby worms in there, as you can see. So they're doing really well, they're happy, and they're healthy. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys found this helpful. If I miss anything, let me know. Please leave it in this comment section below, or if you have any questions or suggestions for me. But stay tuned, I'll be har harvesting some more castings next. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.